Let's go over deep loading Windows 10. Uh, there's two open source projects I use to do this depending on what version of Windows I'm on. So uh, I will cover both versions and I'll show, show you how to check your version and run these tools step by step. So with all that said, let's get into it. If you have a question for me, be sure and head over to twitch.tv forward slash Chris Titus Tech. I do an hour long show on Monday and Friday mornings. If you'd like to check these shows out after the fact, please head over to Chris Titus Tech streams. Links are in the description. All right, to start this out with, I made a cheat sheet so you can copy paste and follow along with both these. So all the links, everything I use in this video is done on this, uh, my website, christitis.com forward slash dbloat dash windows dash 10 dash 2020. <laughs> so uh, I will leave a link in the description so you don't have to type all that out. Uh, by all means, you can follow along with this and cut and paste uh, using it. So let's start with the first uh, thing you need to know, what version of Windows you're on. If you right click on the Windows icon up at the top and then just go down to run and then just type WinVer, this will go what version of Windows 10 you're on. I'm on version 2004, which is the latest version. It was released in May 2020. So uh, if you have 1909 or 1903 or even an older version, I'll show you what you need to do here. There's two projects that I have. The first debloat video I made a couple years ago went over this very first project. And this project is very good, very easy, but it's really made for older versions. It really hasn't been updated lately. The last update it saw was about two months ago. Uh, so relatively new, but not suitable really for the May 2020 release. I've run it on it and I'll actually run it right now just to showcase it. But by running this, just know that if you do run it on the latest version, uh, unless it gets updated by the time I make this video, know that you probably won't be getting the full debloat experience. But there is one really cool thing down at the bottom. There's a quick download link. This will actually go out, download this entire script and run it for you. Uh, and I actually have that on my website. I call it one command to rule them all. So you can double check this just to see if it changes. I just wanted to show you where I found this command. So you're not just cut and pasting random commands from some guy on YouTube. Click on Windows PowerShell Admin, and then we're just gonna do a right mouse button click to paste this in. So copy that, right mouse button to paste that into here, hit enter. This will go ahead, download the script and run it automatically. So if you don't know what any of this is, don't care, just want to remove as much stuff as possible on a brand new install, just hit remove all bloatware. If you want to customize exactly what you see and what gets removed, hit customize. And this customize will pull up a little uh, prompt here. Now, what gets removed and what stays, uh, if it's unchecked, it'll stay. If it's checked, it'll get removed. So once you've actually gone through and say, okay, I want to remove all of this stuff, flip through, see if there's anything in here you'd like to keep and then uncheck it. So let's say you want to keep like the Xbox apps, you just basically uncheck all of those. And when you're finished, you would exit out and then just say remove bloatware with this custom list. Uh, and then it'll go ahead and remove it. Now revert registry changes, that's if something goes wrong, uh, you might want to revert the registry changes. I've never actually used this button. So take that with a grain of salt. You always want to disable Cortana, stop edge, uh, take over. And if we just move our window just a little bit to the right, you can kind of see what's happening in the background on the actual shell. Uninstall OneDrive, unpin tiles from the start menu. Uh, both these I don't think work in 2004, which is what I'm on. You definitely want to disable telemetry and tasks. That's really important. And then remove bloatware registry keys as well. So you, you click that to remove all the bloatware registry keys. This is like Candy Crush and other things that get kind of uh, bloated in your system. All right, with that done, uh, the last things are these are two optional things. If you want to enable dark mode or disable dark mode, you can easily do that here. I like to enable dark mode uh, and then uh, install .NET 3.5. Uh, I usually do this if it's like a gaming PC. A lot of older games and stuff have .NET frameworks like I think Rockstar Launcher and some other ones uh, need .NET. So sometimes I just toss that on there if I know I'm going to be doing some gaming and other stuff. But that's this bloat 
where right here, pretty darn simple. Uh, my one from two years ago, you did it all through the command line and it just kind of did it all for you. If, if you want to just do the, Hey, I don't care about any of this, just hit remove all and it'll remove everything. But there's a couple things you need to know. So down at the very bottom of my article here, I say the optimal way to use this tool, uh, use it when the profile is created, uh, empty the desktop and downloads. If it's not a good profile, let's say it's, it's a profile you've had for years, you probably want to save all your stuff from your desktop and downloads just to make sure it doesn't delete it. And then you want to update your system fully before you run the bloatware tool. Uh, this just ensures uh, as some feature updates and other updates might re-bloat Windows, you want to make sure you're up to date and then de-bloat. So that's the, the optimal way to do it. I usually pick the programs using the custom lists. Then I remove the bloatware uh, with the lists that I did. I disable Cortana. I stop the that. And I just go through each one of the buttons right here on this list for that tool. But I'm on 2004 and this tool is a little bit dated for this install. So let's go to the next project, which I absolutely love. So from here, uh, it's this actual uh, Farang 2 Windows setup script. He's also been doing it for several years. This is open source. Both these projects are open source and it, very, very popular as you could imagine. So you can actually go to this main page and see and read about it and all the things that it does. Uh, this script is very, very thorough. As you see, it, it does do privacy telemetry. It does a little bit more than this first script that I ran. I really, really love this script. And this is the one that I've been using, especially on newer versions, as this is 2004 compatible. So if you look at my source article, I already go ahead and link to the releases. And the releases, you can see, there's a release six hours ago. This guy is a madman. He is constantly updating it. If you look at his re release cycles, he had one seven days ago. He had uh, one, you know, just you just see how much time he dedicates this project. It's really, really good. And it is open source. So if you want to look through the code and make your own or fork it, you totally can but for this, we're gonna grab the release from six hours ago and run it. You see the two different versions here. Uh, you have 2004 and then 1903 and 1909. As I said, this is for newer versions of Windows. Uh, it does have an LTSC release for 2019, uh, but if you have like an unouted, out of date version of Windows from like 1709 or, or two or three years old, you probably don't wanna use this tool. You probably wanna use that first tool. So we're gonna just click on Windows 10 2004 uh, edition and download that. As you see, it's very, very small. We'll open that up and we're gonna extract this and we'll just extract it to downloads. All right, in my downloads directory here, you'll see I extracted the three files that were in that zip file. So we don't actually need this anymore. And we just want to run start 2004. So we can just double click that and run. Now you notice it does give an error message because I didn't run it as admin, which this is needed to do this customization. And if you wanna check this script, you can actually go edit and see what's happening. You can see that it's launching PowerShell and running the PowerShell script. Uh, that's all it's doing. So if you wanna look at all of the source code, and double check it, just click edit to the script and you can see everything that this script does. It's a very, very long script. So we're gonna go ahead and right click and hit run as admin. And then it says, do you wanna create a restore point? I don't like to, so I'm gonna go ahead and put do not create. Do you want to remove all restore points? And I'm gonna go ahead and say delete. This removes all my previous restore points to this computer, kind of cleans things up a little bit. Choose the default color scheme. I like D for dark. Default app mode, dark. All right, so then it launches into the actual apps that it'll re remove. It has steps recorder, quick assist, hello face, MS paint, word pad, and fax and scan. I'm gonna actually leave fax and scan. Uh, I will remove WordPad, MS Paint. I'll also remove Hello Face. That's uh, you might wanna leave Hello Face if you use pins or use your face for actually uh, unlocking your computer. I think that's just creepy and I'm not gonna do it. You can remove Internet Explorer, Quick Assist. No one ever uses pretty much ever. So remove that and then steps. So this all looks good. Now you're gonna probably have a lot more files as I've already de-bloated this machine uh, using that past de-bloat tool. So it does a really good job of actually removing it and doing that. So, so it, it pulls this screen up 
do you want to let apps run in the background? For performance uh, purposes, you might want to disable this feature. So I'm going to go ahead and hit turn off because any uh, apps that are installed could cause issues if they're running in the background. Now, one thing I like to do is I'm, I'm doing a lot of background apps using uh, Ubuntu's Windows Store app. So for me, I will actually leave this enabled, but for you, you probably don't need a tinker like me. Uh, so for this one, I would go ahead, uh, turn it on and let uh, any apps you want to run in the background. I'll probably let Win Windows Terminal I use a lot as well on this machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave those things on, but by all means, go through, uncheck the stuff that you don't want to run while you're not using it. Do you want to change the location, the desktop folder? Uh, most often not, you don't. So we're just going to leave it as default and just put S. You want to change the location of the documents folder? Skip that. Change the location to download, skip. Music, pictures, videos. Start menu tiles. So let's look at our start menu. As you see, I don't have many tiles, so we could unpin all these if we like. Uh, however, since mine's already pretty clean, I really don't need to unpin these tiles. But if you have a ton of crap in there, like Candy Crush, a bunch of empty icons, by all means, you probably want to go ahead and put U for unpin. All right. And now we have packages to uninstall. We want to leave Windows Terminal. We can remove getting started. Uh, we'll leave a screen sketch. As you see, it kind of picks for you what's uh, like the stock settings. For most ones, you want to go ahead and just uninstall these. And I also like to tick uninstall for all users as well. So it doesn't leave these apps behind anywhere. Uh, but most of this is, is just garbage and you want to get rid of it. And my dynamic theme, I've actually installed, I think, both those. But the rest of this, I don't see anything in here. Just gonna do a double check that I wanna keep. So I'm gonna hit uninstall. And this will go through and uninstall all those apps and kind of clean it out for me. All right, so that finally finished. It, it got stuck on that Microsoft Office Hub for several minutes. Uh, so just know it, I did have it selected to remove Office, which could you know bloat up your system. And it depends on if you use it, make sure you uncheck that obviously if you do use Office. Uh, graphics performance preference. You want to add an app which the graphics performance preference will be set to high performance. If you're gaming, I really like this option. I like to add it. So I'll put A and add that. And from this screen, you probably want to go ahead and hit Steam and then scroll down to your Steam.exe and just make sure that you select Steam and maybe some other game launchers as well. So if those are running in the background, it forces your system to use high performance so you can get the best from your thing. Please note, if you do this on a laptop, it will run your battery dead a lot faster. Uh, so be cautious with this on laptops. But for desktops, obviously, put your game launchers and other things that you want high performance on here and just hit open. So you can do this as many times as you want. Obviously, we just did it with Steam, uh, probably should do it for like Blizzard and all those other ones, but we're going to go ahead and skip that for today. I just wanted to showcase that. Controlled folder, folder access. I do recommend this as this will help with ransomware and other things. So adding like your documents folder and those types of things that you don't want any programs to change. So uh, these are really important. Like if you have financials on a folder, uh, you want to protect that folder. By adding a controlled folder access, it'll protect it from ever being changed by a program, which is great. And it's a good protection against ransomware. However, you don't want to just add everything because then your games and other things can't actually change the files within them. So you couldn't patch and other things like that. So be cautious with this. Obviously, uh, just do the real uh, needed documents like your, your, your my documents that, you know, where, where sensitive data is stored. So we're going to hit skip for this. Microsoft Defender. We'll go ahead and skip this. Um, you can exclude certain folders from the scan. Uh, probably good if you have like massive games. Uh, you could exclude those. However, I find a lot of viruses enter computers uh, through game folders. A lot of people try to do like cracks and things like that. And uh, that's why I'm like, I don't really want you excluding folders from Microsoft Defender if you're using that or, or files for that matter. So we'll skip both. 
Everything looks pretty good. Uh, it did not find media playback, uh, which is a feature that I ripped out in the in a prior version. I've actually kind of made this one a bit too minimal <laughs> as like game bar, media playback, some other ones don't even exist in here, which it was trying to set. So uh, this was actually an upgrade from a prior debloat that I might have gone a little too aggressive on. Uh, but for the most part, uh, pay attention to your errors warnings here. I'm totally okay with all of these errors as most of them were my doing. So with that, we'll close out and give this a reboot and see what we get. As far as processes go, let's see if it does remove any processes or if it's less. Right now we have 188 processes going, which is a little on the high side, although I am using this uh, with a ton of game launchers as this is mainly for a game stream PC and I'm actually remoted in with game stream. So as you see right here on startup, I let it just kind of idle for a second. Uh, pretty darn good with about 100 processes dropped off, about 80, 90 processes on that, and a very a much more stable experience just running this to deep load. This is a baseline, and there's a couple more things I'd recommend. As far as things I didn't cover in this video, I think this is great for pretty much every user. Everyone should be debloating their system in some way on Windows 10, as you will pick up probably double the performance if you weren't debloating it. Uh, I would recommend like Ono oh Shut Up and some other tools. I've gone over that in past videos. I'll link them in the description and the top comment if you wanna keep going on this realm. But if you just wanna get a good functional system and just free up a lot of resources, these two projects will get you there. Uh, most people, if you're on the newer version, just run the, the later version. Uh, however, if you're on an old, old version, that first one will still be probably suitable for you. So with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.